ok hi finally hello hi how are you tonight hello hi everybody um, so my name is Kami and um, I'm a working mother and I'm really happy to be here tonight with all of you because tonight we are going to be speaking about some of my favorite subjects. We will be speaking about women, yes? Uh, we will be speaking about opportunities for women. We're going to be talking a little bit about uh, traveling the world and making your dreams come true. But most importantly, we will be speaking about women helping other women. And um, before I tell you my story, I would like it very much, there's a lot of you here tonight that makes me very happy, so I would like it very much if we could, all of us, uh, share this experience about love. So, let me see, I can't see all the way to the back, but um, I'm gonna, can I ask you all to please close your eyes, just for a few seconds, please close your eyes. Thank you. Okay, so now I want you to imagine that you are um, five years old, you're at home, you're in the kitchen, and the whole kitchen smells like warm milk and cinnamon and just a touch of strawberry jam. And I want you to look over to the stove and you're gonna see someone there. It is a woman, and she's stirring in a pot. She looks at you, and she smiles lovingly, and then she's gonna walk over, and she's gonna pour this rich, creamy, delicious rice milk into your favorite bowl, and she leans in. She kisses you on the forehead and she tells you, be careful, honey, it's hot. Picture this woman, picture her truly. And now picture her walking out the door to go to work. You're five years old, you're all alone in the house and your rice milk is cold. You can open your eyes now. Thank you very much for sharing this with me. So, for me, and let's face it, for how many of you, uh, not working was simply never an option. So, and my children were always lucky enough to still have that person by their side, to kiss them on the forehead and tell them, be careful, honey, it's hot. And that person, ladies and gentlemen, she's here with us tonight. Her name is Joy, and she is uh, my guardian angel. So let's welcome her on stage. Joy, can you please join me? Can we all give a warm round of applause for Joy? Warmer, come on, you can do it. Yay, Joy! Thank you, dear. So, uh, when we opened our first business, a beauty parlor, we used to have four Romanians for beauty and we had one Filipina for massage. Every single evening, six o'clock on the dot, all of the Romanians would just drop everything and disappear. Nobody knew where they went. In the meantime, the Filipina would be in her room. She was praying for clients. She was praying for prosperity. And she was nice and quiet, well-behaved, and extremely punctual. So, as you can imagine, when we opened our uh, domestic helper agency, we didn't hire any more Romanians. We got four Filipinas instead. Uh, and now we have five, four for the business and I have one for the home. So let's just say, let's just say for a second that you are interested in hiring a Filipina to be your own personal domestic helper. And the question is, how do I choose, right? Well, first of all, don't choose a woman who doesn't have her own children. No, 
They don't miss them. I mean, they get used to it, and seriously, with Skype and Facebook and all these gadgets we've got nowadays, you really get to miss anybody. I mean, Joy, do you miss anyone back home? Because I think not. In any case, children are their reason for work. For their children, they will endure anything, and a woman without children presents no guarantees. She has no attachments, she has no obligations, so who knows what she could do. Secondly, do not hire a woman who went to college, because they tend to have aspirations. And then Romania is just a stepping stone for them. Most of them want to make it into Western Europe. And then you've got illegal papers, you know, mafia, complications. No, no, no. What you want is a woman who is happy to be here, who is happy to be of help. And I'm here to tell you that she really should be. Um, you see, I go to the Philippines. I go twice a year for recruitment. And it's crowded, it's dirty, and I know you're all thinking Romania or something like that right now. No. Think again. People in the Philippines are born in the streets. They live their lives in the streets. And they die in the streets. So you can imagine. Now, of course, of course there are going to be cultural differences. Yes, of course, you need to take them into account. For example, you cannot raise your boys because in their culture this is considered taboo. These are all the more reasons for you to embrace your role. We're always advising our clients to maintain a healthy distance because obviously people are going to want to seat them at their table, treat them as their own kind. And I keep telling these people, no, you are only confusing them. These people, they need to know their place, you know? And at the end of the day, you need to remember, you're not buying a buddy, you're Filipino maid is a considerable financial investment. This girl right here, Joy, the, Joy, $3,500 just, just to get her from the Philippines to here. Another $400, her monthly salary, another $400 in taxes to the Romanian state. At the end of her two year stay, you are the one who has to fly her back to the Philippines so she gets to see her family. So what you get is a two-month trial period, and what we advise you in order for you to get your money's worth is during this time, really try her. I mean, try her, try her, try her, and of course, if you are still not satisfied, we will provide you with a second one with a 30% discount. You see, the thing is, that they need to put you up on a pedestal. What is it that you think that you are solving by treating them as your equals? Do you, um, do you feel like a big humanist? Because you're not, your gestures are not gonna solve inequality. And the second that you step down off of that pedestal, that's when you're the one who's causing trouble. It is psychological. They need to know that they're working for someone who is above them. This is what keeps them going. This and the thought of their children back home. Because this money pays for their children's education. It pays for building a house. So do you really, do you really want to help them? Then let them work for you, and maybe in a generation or two, they will be at the same level as you are. Please believe me, they are in the best possible conditions. Do you think it's unfair?
says, how many Romanians do you know who managed to save this much money a month? I'll tell you how many. You don't know any. Do you pay rent? Excuse me, do you, sir, do you pay rent? No, do you pay um, expenses, <laughs> electricity, uh, water, stuff like that? No, you don't. Lucky! Does anybody here pay rent? <laughs> Let me see. Do you pay rent? Okay. The Filipinos don't pay rent. Uh, do you pay rent? Okay. Do you, do you buy your own food? <coughs> yes, you do. Okay. They don't buy their own food. Everything that they need is provided to them by their Romanian employer. And now, think of all of the Romanians that you know who are working abroad in far, far worse conditions. And look at the Filipinos. They go on expensive holidays. They spend their weekends at the mall. Joy, Joy, dear, can you please tell me oh, what is a fancy food that you had when you were on holiday with the Nasers? Beluga caviar, pasta with truffles. And now, think of your poorer relatives. Think of your aunt who had 12 abortions. Think of your mother cooked for you and cleaned for you and never got one thank you in return. Think of generations of abandoned children whose mothers are taking care of all the Italian men. Think of all of those things. And now, look at your Filipino maid. Sunday and meet the other Filipinas and go to the church together and maybe in the evening go to a karaoke club or something like do you know that song? It's just another manic Monday I wish it was Sunday but Madam said that I should better try to integrate um, like um, socialize uh, with the Romanians, uh, Joy. You can visit the uh, galleries and uh, museums. Uh, you can take advantage of the fact that you are in Europe now. Yes, ma'am. Museums are closed on Monday. <laughs> Did I tell you that they asked me for my passport? 
well. Uh, when Joy was a little girl growing up in the Manila, 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 in the Philippines, she, uh, her mother was a little bit crazy and she really liked smacking the kids. I'm kidding. Her brothers? Not so much, just Joy. So when Joy left Manila, she had a talk with her mother and she told her, Mom, don't ever lay a finger on me. And then they both sat down at the kitchen table and cried and cried and cried. Really, they cried a lot. Yeah, so the next day, the children are with their grandparents and oh my god, Rodika doesn't really show up and uh, there's nobody to chat with on Facebook. So Joy thinks, why don't I make them a surprise? And what does she do? She cleans the entire kitchen and she cooks them this delicious mm, chicken adobo. When Madame came from the gym, she was so excited. She praised me and she told him, look, she made such a wonderful dish, but she didn't eat it. And neither did he. Yeah, actually, Andy didn't even look at Christina while she was speaking, which made Christina horribly upset. And she went up to her room and Andy followed her. But then five minutes later, he left the house, slamming the door. So now, Joy is eating adobo chicken by herself. Uh, watching TV in the living room, she's watching The X Factor Romania. You shouldn't stay always in the house, mate. Otherwise you will become a fat chismosa. Chismosa, a word in the Filipino language meaning, I don't know what it means. Anyhow, um, the next day, she's gonna ask them for two salaries in advance. I needed to pay for my mother's operation. Mummy dear again. So let me tell you what mummy dear did when Joy first got pregnant with me. You see, Joy was studying communication engineering in Manila. She was in her second year of studies and her mother stopped paying for her schooling. And it wasn't that expensive. The girl was on scholarship. So anyhow, because mother just wouldn't pay the rest of the tuition, Joy here never graduated. Today there was a big garden party. Garden party. So at nine o'clock, Cristina says, I have a headache, and she goes to sleep, right? But Joy can see that the woman's upset. She doesn't say anything. She takes the kids, she uh, puts them to sleep, and then of course, she goes to bed herself. And and then uh, at around one o'clock, after all of the guests had left already, Andy wakes her up like this. Late, 
late in the night, Joy heard Christina scream. Yeah. And then the next day, Christina wakes up at noon and she's all topsy-turvy. And her eyes were swollen and puffy because she's been crying all night. And um, she's wearing this big crepe shawl. On but I can still see the glimpse of the bruises on her arms. Oh my God, May. Today I heard Madam Cristina shouting at Rodica, Mure handicapato! And then I saw Rodica slipping some of the chandelier crystals into her pocket. And I told her to put them back, but she said she wouldn't because she's not coming back. Oh my God, May. Something really strange happened to me today. In the evening, Sir Andy came into the children's room while Joy was putting them to sleep. He kissed them goodnight, he tucked them in, which he never does, and then he went over to Joy and he kissed her on the cheek. Oh, my dearest. He did it again. He came into the children's room when she was putting the kids to sleep. He kissed the kids goodnight, he hugged them, and then he went over to Joy, and he kissed her on the lips like <laughs> What is going on? Am I imagining things? What is going on, I wonder? Oh my God, May, something really bad happened to me today. The next day, Christina, around four o'clock, she says she's gonna go to the hairdressers. She's gonna take Anna with her. And before she leaves the house, she calls Andy. She tells him she's gonna be away till seven. So it was gonna be just Joy and little Jamal in the house. But um, Joy, who's an intuitive person, she can feel her own heartbeat, you know? she can sense that there's going to be trouble. Sure enough, half an hour later, Andy shows up. Now Joy grabs Jamal into her arms instinctively, maybe even as a shield. Oh sir, you are home early. He doesn't answer. He grabs her arm, he pushes her, he starts forcing himself on her, but on cue, Jamal starts crying. So Joy grabs the baby into her arms, and she starts running. She's going up the stairs. She's thinking, what do I do? Where do I go? So she goes into the kid's bathroom, and she uh, thinks, I know, I'll put the baby on the changing table and open his diaper. But he wasn't done with me. I could hear him coming up the stairs. Duh! So now she wants to lock the door to the kid's bathroom, but the kid's bathroom doesn't have a key. So the man gets upstairs, he pushes the door open, he pulls down his pants, he pushes Joy against the wall, and Joy can feel his heart on. As she's struggling, she sees Jamal is crawling off the table. Jamal is falling. So she lunges for the baby and she breaks free of the man, but oh, the baby still falls and hits his head. But now Joy is free. She grabs Jamal into her arms. She starts running on the corridor. She's going to her room. She gets to her room. She locks the door this time. 
In the meantime, Sir Andy is just left there with his pants around his ankles and his dick hanging out. And she joins in her room and she's checking the baby for signs of injury and she doesn't see anything. Twenty minutes later, Jamal is still crying and she doesn't know what to do. If she steps outside her room, she might get raped. If she stays inside, the boy could die of head trauma. As she's trying to figure a way out, she hears on the door. Um, Joy, is there any food? There is macaroni and cheese in the fridge, sir. Hmm. I think we should have Jamal checked. Joy Jamal is a strong Persian boy. He is five. And listen, uh, Nothing happened, so relax, okay? And then she hears his footsteps going down the stairs. And then she hears the microwave go. And then Jamal actually does stop crying. In the evening, I locked myself in the bathroom and I texted Rodica. I told her that I want to call the police. Rodica texted her back. Yes, fato, we go. Muyetum pitilor.
I'm sorry, Joy. I I didn't mean to fire you. You're you're a good soul. And thank you for taking care of my baby Joy. You have to stay. No, ma'am, I think I better I better go now. No, you can't. You can't go now because I can't be alone. After all, everything that's happened, I just, I need your help. I need your help to stay strong for my kids. Please, stay. I don't know what to say, ma'am. Kids' birthdays are coming up in a couple of weeks. How am I gonna handle that? In the state that I'm in, Joy, listen, just don't, don't do it for me. Just do it for the kids. Okay, ma'am, I stay in Tilana's birthday. Thank you, thank you, thank you, princess. Thank you. You will not regret this. Uh, unpack your things, and um, I, I have a present for you. But, of course, if 
you can come into the agency on your day off and we'll set you up a meeting with our therapist and I think that's gonna do you a lot of good. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course, honey, we will try to, to find you a new employer right away, but listen to me very carefully. In the meantime, it's very important. Hang in there, okay?
have been letting me sleep. Madam always expects me to do all the chores. Today I told her that I want to resign. Um, but Joy, you said you'd stay until the kids' birthdays. With all due respect, ma'am, I came to this house as a nanny. Now I'm working as a nanny and a cleaner. But Joy, you said you would stay until the kids' birthdays. With all due respect, ma'am, I came to this house as a nanny. Now I'm working as a nanny and a cleaner. But Joy, you said you'd stay until the kids' birthdays. With all due respect, ma'am, I came to this house as a nanny. Now I'm working as a nanny and a cleaner. But Joy, you said you'll stay till the kids' birthday. With all due respect, ma'am, I came to this house as a nanny. Now I'm working as a nanny and a cleaner. stay until the kid's birthday. With all due respect, ma'am, I came to this house as a nanny, and now I'm working as a nanny and a cleaner. Joy, you said you'll stay until the kid's birthday. With all due respect, ma'am, I came to this house as a nanny, and now I'm working as a nanny and a cleaner. Joy, we paid 3500 for you to come here. You can't just butt out whenever the hell you want to, okay? Yes, ma'am, I too paid a small fortune to come here. And yes, and we gave you two salaries in advance when you asked for your mother's operation. We treated you as part of our family, and all you did was lie and deceive. I never lied, ma'am, and I can pay back the money I owe. Yeah, right, how will you get it? So she came up with a plan for me to pay them back the money I owe them. I will also be working on my free days, uh, doing some of the larger house chores, like um, washing all the windows and uh, uh, cleaning the rugs, uh, scrubbing all the floors. Wow. Hygiene standards reach unprecedented levels in the NASA's residence. Today, Christina is giving Joy a couple of old toothbrushes to scrub the spaces between the tiles on the kitchen floor. It's midnight and Joy is still brushing. something wrong on me, so I decide to go run away with the family. I get my luggage, it's a broke, all my la all my things is broke already like that. That the Iranian tried to do something, kissing me in the morning, something like that. He tried to do something when his husband, uh, her husband not there. He t the last time that uh, we have an encounter, uh, he go so early in the house. He know that the her wife is not there and the oldest daughter is not there. Just only me and the son. And uh, he tried to do something, you know, advantages. 
And I'm so thankful because the babies try to walk right now and uh, at the time he's in dangerous and he took out his pan to try to do something on me and I try to say to his wife, to her wife like that what happening and his, her wife try to joy to the world, joy to the world, to stretch, yeah. stretching every boy and girl.
gets this call from Kami. Uh, Joy, did the last time ever tell you that you were fired or that they terminated your contract? And Joy says, no, on the contrary, they always insist that I stay. Why? Because they did terminate your contract. In fact, they ended it two months ago. So you've been in the country for more than two months without a work permit. And that makes you illegal in Romania. Joy doesn't understand. How's this even possible? She feels like she's sinking into this endless nightmare.
It's settled. I'm coming back home. Today, Miss Laura took me to this international organization for migration. And they are buying me a ticket back home. A proper flight, not a low cost this time. There will be no detention center. And they even might help me to start up a new business back home. This journalist, Miss Laura, still calls me and sends me messages and I think she wants to make a kind of an example out of me. Joy, it is your right to sue them. I mean, just think of all the other oppressed housemates. Today she took me to the airport. She carried all my luggage and when I was putting them on a luggage counter, she told me, Listen, Joy, we still have 20 minutes, so listen, if you just sign this handwritten statement, it's, it's called a right of attorney, it authorizes me to represent you in Romanian court, you can go home, you can still sue them, you can make them pay for what they did to you. Joy, you deserve this, don't you want to make them pay? It's not for me to punish them. It's your battle, not mine. Godwin. assisted 
transport. We do not use these um, low-cost airlines. These do not match our principles. Uh, we ensure that all of the documents are in order. We provide medical assistance, care, counseling and accommodation, sending the migrant back home. Do they really want to go back home? Yes, but most importantly, we are committed to helping them in their reintegration process. Uh, we are supporting them to start small businesses. Some of them, they have become cereal shop owners. Others, they wish to become street vendors, selling uh, what's... Uh, uh, water, food, coffee, the like. Overall, we have helped over 40 illegal Filipinos return home. Uh, but Mrs. Merkel, do they really want to go back home? Yes, sometimes um, it is local habits yeah, that make adaptation impossible. Uh, sometimes the smallest gesture can acquire new meaning. Not being paid for two months. Is this a small gesture I'm supposed to get used to? All of the people who come to us, they are vulnerable. Yeah, but what struck me most about the Filipinos is their sense of discipline. As soon as they find out that they are illegal, they report it. They're extremely religious and uh, well-educated, keen on respecting the rules. And I remember this one um, autumn Saturday morning, this tiny shivering woman uh, waiting in front of our locked gates. And it was a Filipina, yeah, who had been kicked out by her employer. And of course, we helped her find accommodation that very weekend. And although this was not my responsibility, I gave her money. But we cannot get involved in all of our cases to this level. So, let's say I'm a lawyer or a shrink and I want to work pro bono with one of these cases, how can I contribute? When dealing with migrants, there are rules and procedures. And these rules and procedures, they are confidential. And I am bothered <coughs> by these journalists who wish to stick their nose into our business. Take this journalist, for example. She publishes a piece saying that the IOM is not helping solve the real problem because the migrants get sent back home while the exploiters remain unpunished. And because of this, we are not a part of the solution. We are part of the problem. And I ask you, how is the IOM part of any of these problems? You call them when you need them, and then you send them back home. And you call this migration management. The IOM is a player in migration management. We disseminate information among IOM member states and observers. This is not an easy job we have here. Our workers face great health risk as they come into contact with all sorts of people who carry disease. But uh, Mrs. Merkel, why are comments deactivated on your YouTube channel? <laughs> Any questions?
27 Filipinos working legally in Romania in this moment. And they generate for the state around $3.63 million. And one morning, a Filipino calls the Romanian state and says, I'm a, 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 a hello Romanian state. My uh, employer gives me dog food. And the Romanian state says, uh, well, we are very sorry, but we cannot interfere. You know, it's private property and there's no trespassing. Yes, but I do have a contract and I, I pay my taxes. making 
what, $400 a month. This is 5 million women times $400 a month. The loving wives save us. <laughs> to demand to be paid 